June 19th was really one of those days that we didn't expect much out of the day. There wasn't a whole lot of storm potential at the start of the day. And as the day went on, I started to think, well, maybe we've got a, a chance at something in the evening. Um, but little did we know that this storm was going to form to the west of Regina and we got on it as soon as we could and it was just turned into this beautiful uh, mothership supercell that went right over the city but it didn't last very long the challenge with the storm was that we had to try and get it at its peak in order to get the best photo opportunity and at that point that's really what I was interested in was getting that photo opportunity of this massive rotating mothership and that's what really kicked off the storm season for me was that one storm we get on this storm and it's already tracking over Regina we get this great viewpoint of it we're just to the to the east of it it's tracking right towards us I get out of the car and look up and I can see all of the cloud mass that's streaming into the storm and it's slowly getting more rotation into it and uh, it's it's quite a sight uh, you know I'm just standing there holding the camera in in awe of, of this amazing storm structure that I'm that's right in front of me at that point uh, it, it, my priority just becomes to get as many photos of it as I can and um, and make the most of the opportunity. It's amazing what seeing one really good storm like that does for your morale. And that definitely boosted our morale uh, that day, albeit it was a short local chase. Um, it's still one that I'll, I'll remember for, for many years to come, uh, just, just for the storm itself. July 18th. Um, man, what a beast of a storm that was. Um, in terms of uh, damage, it was all wind. Uh, that was the biggest threat with this storm system, and it was fast moving, and it had extremely high winds. And, um, you know, we didn't have our team ready to go that day, so I was sitting at home um, in the afternoon. Just kind of keep an eye on things in the sky, and and all, and it was a really eerie um, leading up to it uh, because there was a definite breeze blowing. It wasn't, but it wasn't that strong. And I think it, if I remember correctly, it somewhat calmed down a little bit before it rolled in. But everywhere I look to my west is just these exploding towers. Uh, every, everywhere you look, big white billowy towers so we knew there was something I knew there was something that was gonna happen whether it be hail wind or heavy rain I knew that I was gonna have an opportunity to get some great storm footage without even leaving my house I'm really going back and forth between my backyard and my front yard uh, as this is coming uh, towards me um, but I really have no idea what's coming towards me. I haven't checked the radar recently or anything like that. Um, but all of a sudden the sun gets blocked, uh, wind picks up, and I feel like, okay, here it comes. And I'm expecting the rain to start. Um, but instead I get a completely different surprise. The wind gust, I, I really have no way to explain it. I mean, you had to be there to feel this wind. Um, this gust of wind. It was just a humongous all of a sudden, and I saw it before I felt it, because it came down the street from the west, went through the trees, picked up dust and debris, and all of a sudden, garbage cans on the street are blown over, dust is flowing across the street, and uh, it really hits me that I've gotta get out of here, and it, it gave me a serious push, too. I mean, that's how strong these winds were. It let up a little bit, but it still it's remained very sustained, picking up dust and debris. My initial response is to take shelter uh, beside the house because this wind is coming straight from the west. Um,
but I look back towards the street and this wind is not really letting up. Um, that initial gust was the strongest, but it's still blowing really hard. Um, there's debris going through, so I go back towards out uh, to the front of the driveway to try and get a better shot. Um, and I can feel my face is just full of sand. Um, my hair is full of sand. And it was really just a mini prairie sandstorm right there in my own block. Uh, this storm carried on for quite a few minutes actually. As it blew through, it was very fast moving. But there really wasn't even a single drop of rain the entire time. It was just a complete gust front that blow, blew through. Now the problem was, behind my house, there's at that time in the summer, there was a big construction site. Not filled with nothing but sand. And so I look back to the north and all I see is this wall of sand and blowing through the trees. And uh, so for me, I'm really helpless there, <laughs> standing with my camera watching my trees getting taken apart in the yard. Um, you know, it's you're just helpless sitting sitting there watching things get taken apart. Fortunately, there wasn't hail accompanying accompanying this storm. Otherwise, we would have had some really serious damage if we had hailstones getting hucked through the air at uh, at those with those winds. Can't even see the road back behind us. Not over yet. July 18th is definitely a day uh, that I won't soon forget. And the reason is I didn't have to drive a single mile that day and I still got some of my best footage of uh, of that month of, of storm season and it's uh, it's been a really popular video on, on online and it's something that I enjoy going back and watching myself on occasion. Now we gotta clean up buddy, eh? Going into July 23rd, um, you know, this chase was another rather impromptu chase. Uh, there wasn't really supposed to be big, severe storms this day. And probably about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, this little cell formed north of Regina. Started tracking southeast, and it came right to us. And so, there's no way I was going to pass up this opportunity. Going at this storm, I definitely approach, approach this like it's my last chase of the year. It's late in the storm season, we don't know how many more opportunities we're going to get. So I really want to get the best footage and photos I possibly can out of this thing. One of the things about this chase that some people may not know is that if you look closely in the video, I actually had our RC camera probe sitting in the back seat of the chase vehicle throughout that entire chase. So I want to launch this probe, but I'm having a hard time finding a good enough spot to launch it. Not only do I have to be in a good open area, but I also need to be in a spot in front of the storm where there's not, where the winds are not too strong high up. So this is the, it's a very exact science in terms of deploying this probe. You also need to have enough time to deploy it. Something I always tell people about this storm is that this is probably one of my most favorite chases of last of 2013, um, but also my most frustrating. The reason is Dave's the driver. He's the one that ultimately has to make the call of where we go. I want to go south because I want to make another play on the on this storm front, and he decides to push west farther. But I can tell heading west that we're going to get nothing but rain. We're going to get caught in the rain core of the storm and we're not going to have another chance at it. But we pass our really our only south option fairly quickly as soon as we start to head west. And our next south option is really not until we get into the city and have to deal with traffic and, and all of those other things. So it really becomes a bit of a nightmare 
On top of that, we have torrential downpours pounding us, creating really um, bad, dangerous driving conditions because it is collecting in the streets and on the roads and causing hydroplaning and flash flooding in some areas around the city. So because of this rain, it's, it's creating a really dangerous situation, not only for us, but for everybody else out on the roads, and we have to find a way to get through this core. Eventually, we just are forced to basically ride the rain out, and the storm pushes on southeast, but we're losing light, and uh, we decide to stop and just watch it move away from us. And what happened next is, was really one of the highlights of our storm season. The entire back anvil of this storm gets lit up by the sunset to the west and it just becomes this beautiful fiery orange uh, red um, color all over the backside. Then on the lower side there's CG strikes going off in the distance. Um, so really, all in all, it created um, a beautiful photo opportunity to end what overall was sort of a frustrating chase in the middle. Um, it ended out really well, um, and it was a beautiful sight to see, and it's, it was a great setup because we knew we were, if we pushed on after that thing, we were not going to have enough light to really see much else. Uh, there was not enough light left in the day. So I'm really glad we stopped when we did, and we definitely made the most of that storm in the end. Oh, yes! Yes! Oh, got that. August 5th, there were storm cells across the southern portion of the province. There were storms firing everywhere this day, and really it was just a matter of picking and choosing which one you wanted to go after, whether you wanted to go after sort of the closer one that looked really good, or you wanted to make a play for the one that was a little farther off and take the chance, take a risk. Um, for us, we our, the initial cell that we got on actually looked really good and uh, it looked like it had potential to strengthen as it moved eastward um, and we saw I saw some, several uh, signs some of which are not actually recorded on video um, of tornado potential with this storm and so it was really um, at that point your adrenaline is really going um, you know we're trying to finish out the year with a tornado and this seemed like our best chance, and probably our last, uh, to do it. You know, from a photography standpoint, getting caught in the rain is is not a good proposition, and it's not a good proposition from any standpoint in regards to storm chasing. And on this day, I'm on two missions. Number one is to get get the footage uh, that I want. Number two is to launch this camera probe and because uh, we haven't successfully done it yet this season and it's sitting there in the back seat of the vehicle and I know it's there and I'm just waiting for that right opportunity to do it and just when I think we're in a good spot the wind really picks up with the storm and I know we're not going to be able to do it here we have to go s further south so we push on further south watching a couple of different lowerings and what looks like a developing wall cloud and we set we sat there for several minutes and the storm's just slowly moving by us we're trying looking at radar trying to decide what we want to do and you know th this is sort of the real dead space spot in the chase is just sitting there letting things play out for a few minutes then all of a sudden uh, Dave looks up and he says, what's that above us? And uh, I look up, put the camera up, and oh my goodness, the clouds are rotating above us. And it really did not have 
uh, it wasn't together enough to really produce a funnel, but it definitely um, was a really cool shot to see these um, a couple of different portions in the in the storm above us rotating, um, and we were able to look right up into them. Um, that was actually one of the highlights of the chase, uh, being able to film that. Um, it was a really cool experience, even though it didn't consolidate like I hoped it would. Um, even if it had, it probably would have come down not far from us, so ultimately it was a good thing that it didn't. Our second storm of the day, as we headed west, uh, turned into this giant pancake stack and went right over Regina. And this was a storm that wasn't really documented at all. I think we were probably one of the only chasers that got on that storm. Unfortunately, it was fairly short-lived as it went east and sort of died off. Um, but the few photos that I have from that storm, are, I really remember well. And uh, it was a just this beautiful structure. Um, you could see all parts from it as we headed uh, west towards it and uh, that was that was the last real thunderstorm of, uh, of 2013 that we saw that was our last uh, full-on chase and uh, you know we didn't end it with a tornado um, and we didn't end it with a good epic lightning shot um, but at the same time when I look back over all the storms we got, um, there was a real variety, and I'm really proud of that, that we were able to capture that kind of footage of that many different kinds of storms, whether it be uh, really strong winds, beautiful structure, heavy rain. I mean, you know, I think our overall, uh, the storms that we captured were very ra well rounded. And uh, 2013 to me, as a whole in the big picture was definitely a great success. 2013 was definitely a great year, but I have a feeling 2014 is going to be even better. Stay tuned and follow along for the ride with us as we begin season two of Storm Hunters starting this fall on saskatchewanweather.ca.